Big one. We'll start the Sunday showdowns with an old-fashioned showdown out west. The Cowboys and the 49ers. This is vibes of like the, the late 90s when these yeah. teams were vying for NFC championships. So, Rank, in fantasy, what are you looking for in this one? This might be a surprise to a lot of people, but I'm going to sit both quarterbacks in this contest. Both Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott fell out of my top 12 of quarterbacks this week. Now, don't get crazy. Don't start doing something super wild. But I think, like, if you've been streaming Dak and Brock Purdy with guys like, well, if it was Justin Fields, I hope you started him last night. But even Sam Howell would have probably been a better start as well. You look at C.J. Stroud, I would probably start him over both these quarterbacks. Uh, Joshua Dobbs is where it gets dicey, but I think for the most part, we're going to leave both these guys on the bench if you can afford it, because uh, I expect this to be a little bit low scoring because of the good defenses. If you're sitting Brock Purdy, I say beware of his tight end, George Kittle. You might not be able to sit him just because tight end, but his lone big game has come without Brandon Ayuk this year. When Brandon Ayuk has played, George Kittle is averaging 4.3 fantasy points per game and has gone for 30 yards or less in all three. Plus, the Cowboys have allowed the seventh fewest fantasy points per game to tight ends. I am very concerned about George Kittle. I expect George Kittle is going to be asked to block and try to slow down that pass rush. But even if you're sitting Dak, I think Brandon Cooks is worth a start this week. The Niners playing a lot of zone, trying a lot, trying not to get beaten over the top, but they're giving up a lot of room underneath. We saw that against the Rams a few weeks ago. Cooks seeing most of his targets within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. That's about where the Niners have given up nearly 60% of the receiving yards. Now, for the Cowboys, it might be tough to sustain long Long drives that way, but for your fantasy team, could mean a whole lot of targets and some yards right there. Moving on to the Eagles and the Rams, and a lot of fantasy rosters represented in this one. Uh, Cooper Cup, a name that may be coming back. So, Florio, what should we be doing with Cup if he is on the field? If Cooper Cup plays for the Rams, he plays for your fantasy team. It is as simple as that. Like, I have Cooper Cup in a number of leagues. I've already plugged him in. Just to remind you how good he is, two years ago, he scored the most fantasy points by a wide receiver ever and last season was on pace for the second most ever behind only himself so even if he's on some sort of snap count or, or not fully uh, integrated into the offense yet it doesn't matter he brings enough upside that you just if he plays football he plays in your fantasy line and I've been on record of telling everybody to continue to play Puka Nakua regardless of the status of Cooper Cup this Rams offense has shown in the past It'll support two high-end wide receivers. We saw it with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods a number of years ago. But, Coop, uh, but Puka Nakua has been way too good to be ignored in this offense. And if anything, believe it or not, this could open it up for Puka. You cannot concentrate. You cannot now float two guys onto Puka Nakua. you got to keep a, a tabs on where Cooper Cup is on the field. So if you got Puka Nakua, you got a lottery ticket. Don't try to trade him. Don't try to do anything like that. Just continue to start him. Puka Nakua is pretty much already locked down waiver wire pick of the year, I would suspect. <laughs> I do think Tyler Higby is a sleeper, even if Cooper Cup is back this week. And I say that because a couple of weeks ago when the Rams played the Bengals, they had a tough time slowing down that Cincinnati pass rush. That forced Matthew Stafford to get the ball out quick, and that was one of the best games that Higby has had all year. Meanwhile, they got to deal with this Philadelphia front. Those guys can get after the quarterback. So even with Cup there, even with Nakua there, there still could be a lot of opportunities. And look, the bar for a successful tight end fantasy week set pretty low. So yeah. Tyler Higby is, is worth a sleeper start there. We uh, will forget about any sort of pop stars, but we'll talk about the Chiefs Anyway, they got the Minnesota Vikings coming up this week. Uh, a matchup of documentary stars. Uh, Kirk Cousins, Patrick Mahomes, both in that quarterback documentary uh, rank. I don't know if you're starting any. You're probably starting both of those guys. But anybody Obviously. else Anybody else you're looking at in that game? I like Isaiah Pacheco in this one, who's really started to come on over the last couple of weeks. He's He's got angry feet, I think. Is what, like he, <laughs> it, if you play in a league where you get point per step, like, his feet are always moving. But over the last couple of weeks, his touches and yards have increased. He's played uh, – excuse me, he's played a 136 snaps this season, far uh, – almost doubling what Jarek McKinnon has been able to do. And he's so good after contact. As you see right there, the totals on the board are correct. 100 rushing yards after contact. Decent matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. But I really – what I think I believe is it's the, it's the Chiefs offense that you want to start. So, Isaiah Pacheco, a definite must start for me. 
Pacheco runs like he's angry at the grass. Uh, on the other side, I'm saying beware of Alexander Madison. He played a season low in snaps last week with Cam Akers active. And I think the Vikings could be in catch-up mode in this game against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And when they were in that mode in week two, he scored less than five fantasy points. Plus, the Chiefs have allowed just one touchdown to running backs and have not allowed a top 15 running back all season. Well, I'm taking a page out of Florio's book here and saying Kadarius Tony is a sleeper this week. I get it. He is not very heavily involved in route what? running. Oh. He's not on the field a ton. But when he's on the field, they do make a concerted effort to get the ball in his hands. He is targeted once out of every three routes he's run this season. Just get the ball in space. Let him work. Minnesota giving up the fifth most yards after the catch. So this might be a chance for Kadarius Tony to showcase his athletic ability. We just need him to stay on the field. That's been sort of the big thing with him so far in his career. Uh, the Dolphins playmakers were grounded last week, but this week, they're taking on the Giants, a team that looks like they are in shambles right now. Yeah. So, uh, Rank, any fantasy wisdom for this one? Well, it's probably already too late because I'm sure somebody in your league's already gone and picked up the Miami Dolphins defense. But, you know what? It doesn't hurt to go and take a look. Uh, obviously, when you've watched the Giants play, they do not block anybody. They don't score. And if Saquon Barkley doesn't play, this is a horrifically bad, almost painful offense to watch. So, if you really want to get ahead of this, Start looking at the Giants' schedule for the coming <laughs> weeks and start planning ahead. No, like it's it's a legitimate thing to do because you want to start matching up, especially if you're somebody who streams defenses and you don't want to be in this position where the Dolphins are already gone. Go go ahead and take a look. And if I had been more prepared, um, you know, I would have looked up who the who the Giants are playing coming up. But listen, I uh, I'm why busy writing search. rhymes. I got other things going on. I, I brought a wig. Like there's a, there's a whole <laughs> the whole thing going on right now. I know they get the Bills after this week, so play the Bills defense in that one. I also think in this game though you could start Darren Waller. Daniel Jones. First of all, I don't think people realize that he's a top 12 fantasy tight end entering the week. But also Daniel Jones said yeah. this week that they need to do a better job getting Darren Waller the ball. I'm hoping for like a squeaky wheel sort of game, especially since last week Bellinger got hurt on the first drive Waller had to block more than he wanted to and then they're playing the Dolphins they're gonna have to throw to put up points so I'm giving Darren Waller another shot this week one more chance Biggie give me one more chance <laughs> uh, I say you can start Raheem Mostert and this is mostly for people who are sort of worried after they've seen what Devon A. Chan's done the last couple of weeks I mean last week these two these two players had equal route participation and actually Mostert had more targets in the game than A. Chan did plus the key facts here he's still getting a lot of the short down and distance work and getting work inside the five yard line and look barring the unexpected the Dolphins should have a lead I think they're going to be trying to just run some clock so that means Raheem Mostert could get himself some carries in the fourth quarter speaking of the Dolphins they did make a move up of the weekend so let's have a little positive vibes here on this feel good Friday all right Florida will start in San Francisco Christian McCaffrey has had a fantasy manager saying have mercy I mean it's been amazing so far <laughs> all year long uh, that, that was my Uncle Jesse. Oh, I know. Didn't. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, you feel good about him going up against that Cowboys defense this week? No, I feel great. I feel like I just, I have a star in Mario Kart, which is, you're untouchable when you have that. You know, there you go. I, I, Look, right now, Christian McCaffrey is the best player in fantasy football. Coming into the week, he had 30 more fantasy points than any other running back, 16 more than any other player. He's on pace for more than he had in 2019 when he scored the second most fantasy points ever. And now, yeah, the Cowboys defense is getting thrown at him like a blue shell that comes from first place. But it does not matter because he's got a shell, a, a star in his pocket. I still expect over 20 fantasy points from him this week. That's more Mario Kart references than I think we've ever had in the history of the show. <laughs> best Nintendo game. There it is. Uh, all right, Rank, let's talk about the Detroit Lions. David Montgomery had a great night last week. And everybody wants Jameer Gibbs to kind of get more opportunity. But how are you sure. feeling about Monty uh, going up uh, this week? Oh, I feel great. Like, it's late at night. You need to curb your hunger. And there is a Detroit tradition called the American Coney Dog that just absolutely hits the spot. It's a chili dog. It is the, one of the most amazing things. I don't know why it's a Detroit tradition, but I'm happy that it's here. And I'm sure that everybody in Detroit is happy that David Montgomery is a part of this team. After watching him destroy the Lions for years as a member of the Chicago Bears, he's come out and put up a really good season. And he's the guy who's taken over for Jamal Williams as that end zone back, as the power runner. And yeah, it's come at the expense of Jameer Gibbs a little bit. But at the same time, David Montgomery's out there feasting. And last week, going up against the Green Bay Packers, unbelievable. And now in another pretty good matchup, 
I think that David Montgomery is an absolute must start every week, and I feel great about it. Just so satisfied. Yeah, that should, should. Uh, very tasty Coney dog right there. Uh, meanwhile, Anthony Richardson, he's got the he's got the Indianapolis Colts this week. Uh, actually, he has the Tennessee Titans, I should say, plays for the Indianapolis Colts. And I want, you know what? It's Friday. It feels like you just got paid. You're going out. You're going to have a, a great weekend. That's how I feel about Anthony Richardson so far this season and definitely this week against the Titans. I mean, we love the rushing upside. We love that Indy has integrated him into the design run game. Run game participation on par with quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. And you know what? Even without the great passing numbers. He's still averaging almost 23 fantasy points per game. By the way, that number could have been higher. Week one, he left the game late when the Colts had the ball near the goal line. Might have been able to run in another touchdown that would have bumped up that scoring average. So, uh, feeling great about Anthony Richardson. I don't care that the Titans are good against the run. Doesn't matter to me at all. Uh, You know what also you should care about? You set your alarms. Because the International Series continues this Sunday from London, the Jags will host the Bills, and you can only catch it here on NFL Network. The Bills can streaming on NFL Plus Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. So we will look into our Sunday showdowns with a spotlight on that London game. Trevor Lawrence says he thinks it's cool how London fans have been getting into the game, although he didn't have the best showing at Wembley last week. But, uh... Will things change, Florio? How do you feel about the, the Jaguars this week? Yeah, I know everyone probably thought I was going to pick a Bill, and I guess in a way I kind of am because I'm saying sit Trevor Lawrence against this Bills defense. Trevor Lawrence right now this season is averaging just 14 and a half fantasy points per game and one passing touchdown per game. Now he gets the Bills who are top two in quarterback pressure and sack rate, but blitz at the second lowest rate in the league, meaning they could put a bunch of people in that secondary still. Von Miller might also be making his debut in this game. The Bills have allowed three touchdowns and eight interceptions to quarterbacks this year. I I would get away if possible. I'm going to say that Dalton Kincaid is a sleeper for you. Perhaps the Pete Best of this Bills (laughs) offense. I think this is a pretty good opportunity going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have allowed close to 17 fantasy points per game to tight ends this season. And they've also allowed the second most targets to tight ends. So we've been kind of waiting for Dalton Kincaid to break out. This could be the game. And I've been told by my showrunner to to no longer make any more Beatles references because I butchered it yesterday. Poor Pete Best. Like, that's going to be his whole legacy. It is. Yeah, I mean, basically. I'm I'm sorry for him. Uh, I think you can start Travis Etienne because, look, if the Bills defense has a weakness, it's against pass-catching running backs. Right now, that role belongs to Etienne. 11% target share, 65% route participation. More importantly, he's playing pretty much all of the two-minute snaps. So if the Jaguars are trailing, which I believe is a possibility, Ability. Uh, that means there's a chance for ETN at the end of halves, end of game, potentially to rack up some quick points with just some short throws, some catch and run after that. So there it is. Uh, Joe Burrow said it's the best he's felt after a game, after what he saw last week. They've got the Cardinals this week. The Cardinals certainly have shown that they are not a pushover. So, Florio, what fantasy advice do you have for this one? I'm saying you could start James Conner. I know he's coming off his worst game of this season, but that was against the 49ers, who are the hardest possible matchup for a running back. In games not against the 49ers, he's averaging 16 fantasy points per game, and the Bengals have allowed the second most rushing yards per game. Plus, this is kind of crazy to say, game script might actually be in James Conner's favor this week if the Bengals struggle to move the ball. I'm going to say beware of Joe Burrow. Uh, in this one, that even though he feels better, we still, I, it's okay to yeah. wait to see what is going on with him. It, it's like watching a golfer who cannot hit his driver. You're like, oh, geez. You're like, when you're teeing off with your five iron, you're really putting yourself in a hole, especially on the par fives. I would even say that maybe stream Joshua Dobbs over him. It really comes down to the type of fantasy player that you are. If you are a, a person who has attachment to the name of the player, then you're going to go with with Joe Burrow. But if you're looking at matchup and opportunity and production, Josh Dobbs might be the way to go. It's really getting hard to start Joe Burrow uh, at this point. I think you can start Zach Ertz, though, because nearly 25% of the targets have gone in his direction. He's got more than 25% of the team's air yards. He's had six catches in three of Arizona's four games. And look, you know, Rank talked about how Cooper Cup coming back could help Puka Nakua. Well, I think Michael Wilson sort of emerging in that offense only helps Zach Ertz. That's one more guy that a defense has to pay attention to, and that'll help Zach Ertz possibly get open a little bit more. Plus, the Bengals struggling against tight ends 
giving up the sixth most fantasy points per game to the position. Finally, we've got the Texans and the Falcons. Texans have scored more than 30 points in their last three games. We all love C.J. Stroud. Florio, does the offense keep rolling for Houston? It keeps rolling this week. C.J. Stroud has looked amazing. That's why I think that a sleeper this week is Tank Dell. I know he's coming off of a down game last week, but variance is just so high at the wide receiver position, especially for a rookie. There will be some ups and downs, but don't forget that he was scoring over 20 fantasy points in each of the two games prior to that, and A.J. Terrell shadowed Calvin Ridley last week. We could see him do the same to Nico Collins, which could mean more volume going to Tank Dell, and the Falcons have allowed a top 20 fantasy wide receiver in three straight. I'd play both Texans receivers this week. Another quarterback that I would consider starting over, Joe Burrow. As a matter of fact, I have him ranked over him. C.J. Stroud, who has been fantastic. First player in NFL history with 1,200 passing yards, no interceptions in his first four career games. As a matter of fact, he's had at least 20 fantasy points in three consecutive games. And I understand it's not, the Falcons' defense is not the pushover that you think that they are. They've been they, 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 they playing better. But I'm just banking on this Texans' offense to continue to roll and it's the bye weeks we need quarterbacks cj stroud is an excellent choice let's keep all this texans love rollings i think you can stream houston's defense this week the falcons have gained fewer than 290 yards in three of four games they've thrown for 160 or fewer yards in those same three games they've given the ball away five times that's you know not too egregious but they have given up 16 sacks which yikes uh the texans are getting pressure without blitzing so i think they can get after uh, the, the quarterback there, get after Desmond Ritter a little bit. I think sacks are coming. To me, goes Ryan's defense. I don't think it's where he wants it to be, but it's turning a corner, and I think this is a week that you can stream him. Both the Steelers and Patriots are in a downward spiral on offense. So let's dive into the fantasy implications of their respective games. First up, Steelers and Ravens, always a low-scoring, old-school, just slobber knocker of a match. So, Florio, give us some fantasy advice for this one. I don't love saying this, but I would sit Najee Harris if you have other options this week. He had his best fantasy game of the year last week, and he was still outscored by Jalen Warren. And it's because Jalen Warren is hogging all of the pass game usage, so you have to rely on ground production for Najee. And that is tough against the Ravens team that is allowing 85 rushing yards per game to running backs and have not allowed a touchdown to the position so far this season. I'm going to say to sit George Pickens, uh, even with uh, it looks like uh, the quarterback is Kenny Pickett is going to be able to go, but I'm still not I'm not comfortable with George Pickens. And by the way, if George Pickens goes off and you want to come flame me later, uh, I benched him for DJ Moore. So get off me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. Well, you heard Michael Francis tell the boss to flex Gus Edwards. I'm going to second that and say that you can start him. This week, the Ravens still have the most run-heavy offense in the league, going against the NFL's 29th-ranked run defense. And uh, Justice Hill is a little bit banged up, dealing with foot and hamstring issues. So right now, Gus Edwards is the running back of record there in Baltimore. And as long as Hill is still limited, Edwards is going to see a ton of work in that backfield. Well, similar to the Steelers, the Patriots allergic to the end zone last oh. week. They're facing a Saints team that also so couldn't mean. get their way into the painted area in week four. So, Florio, does anybody find fantasy redemption in this? I'm hoping that Chris Olave does. And on the teams where I have him, I am continuing to start him. I know he's coming off of a very down game last week. That's more about Derek Carr not being able to get him the ball with his banged up shoulder. But Olave prior to last week was averaging over 17 fantasy points per game. And shout out to research for this one. He is the second most yards against man coverage. The Patriots allow the second most attempts to man coverage. Chris Olave's had one bad game. People, settle down. You got to start him. All, same thing goes for Ramadre Stevenson. Uh, obviously, it wasn't great against the Dallas Cowboys, but he's had 17-plus fantasy opportunities in each game this season. He's far out snapping Ezekiel Elliott. And if and if they're not going to give a bunch of snaps to Ezekiel Elliott against this former team, like, it's just not happening. If this team, if this Patriots squad is going to get back on track, the best way to do it is to get the ball into the hands of Ramadre Stevenson, which is why he's starting for me. You would think so, but the Saints have a good run defense. This is why I think Kendrick Bourne is going to be a sleeper. Look, I'm not giving them any sort of ultimatum, like they've got to throw the ball to him. And I don't think he's going to give you any kind of fantasy supremacy. He is the wide receiver one there. So he does have some kind of identity in this offense. And as long as Mac Jones can keep finding him at a relative rate, they all not enough, though. He can catch it. They don't, they don't throw it to him enough is the point. 
can catch it. He can catch it. They should throw it to Ramondre Stevenson, but because more. they don't, that's what I'm saying. They're gonna throw it to Kendrick Bourne, and I'm gonna, I've, I've, you know, I don't run our animation.